all prayerfully sit in the presence of God so that uh, God will speak to us this morning. Let us look unto the Lord in prayer for a moment. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day which you have given to us, O God. We commit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Father, we understand this is the time to receive the word of God. Father, we uh, commit ourselves in the mighty hand of God and we believe that you are going to bless us together with your word and you're going to speak to us, O God. We thank you for, amen, uh, giving this wonderful opportunity to come together in the presence of God. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, somebody said it, uh, when uh, we listen to the word of God, uh, there must be a conviction and uh, a confession and also a conversion among the people. There should be a conviction and there should be a confession and also there should be a conversion among the people of God. That means uh, the people uh, must be convinced about the message. Uh, then that conviction will lead us into a confession and the confession will lead us into a conversion or transformation in the heart of the people. Otherwise, uh, there is no benefit at all in listening uh, the sermons, I mean, every, every Sunday or every Friday or every other day, I mean, so usually, uh, we listen sermons after sermons every week, I mean, uh, but let me ask, uh, uh, what is the outcome of it? What is the outcome of it? I mean, usually we are listening the sermons after sermons every week, every week, every week. What is the outcome of that? And what is the result of that? Is there any transformation in our personal life? And today it's my prayer that uh, 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 as I conclude uh, uh, our topic restoration, that let us, let us have a conviction about the need of the restoration and let us have a confession and repentance about our weak areas and let us have genuine transformation in the days to come. Hallelujah. You know, uh, what usually most of the people uh, does, they just hear the sermons and make some uh, comments on the sermon or on the, on the preacher who preached the sermon. Someone will say, okay, uh, that, uh, that message was awesome. And some other people will say uh, it, it was very boring. And some, someone would say, uh, take, take the notes of the sermons and uh, uh, some people would uh, simply sit and watch all these things, uh, what is happening there. Uh, but let me tell you one thing, uh, there, there is a life-changing message in every sermon. There is a life-changing message in every sermon. So we have to carefully listen the sermon with a, with, a, with a heart of acceptance and that will lead us into a transformation, hallelujah. So when we receive that word with, with an acceptance, with an acceptance, we are receiving that word and that word will transform us. That word will transform us. That word will make some, I mean, changes in our Christian life, hallelujah. So uh, I have been preaching about the restoration for almost two months, but I could not make a, make a conclusion for that series of sermons but today's message will be the final message on that topic, amen? And today's uh, title is the, uh, is the revival through uh, restoration, the revival through restoration. And uh, we are taking that topic from Ezra chapter one, verse one, and also Nehemiah chapter eight, verses five and six. Ezra chapter one, verse one, and Nehemiah chapter eight verses five and six today. Uh, Elsa is going to read uh, the uh, Bible verses and I request uh, Elsa to read these verses. Yeah. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Um, Nehemiah chapter eight, verse five, verse five and six. Um, and Ezra, and, and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people, for he was above all the people, and he opened it all, and he opened it all. The people stood, and Ezra blessed the Lord and the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Amen. Okay, so the revival through restoration is the main topic that we have taken for today's message. Uh, but before we move into that topic, I have uh, a few more things to share with you from Nehemiah chapter 3 
and that is no restoration, no restoration without renovation, no restoration without renovation. I know that uh, when I uh, share with you about uh, the topics, uh, you are getting some of the ideas about uh, when what I'm going to speak. Okay, so we are going to think about no restoration without renovation. I mean, and after that, we'll be thinking about the revival through, I mean, restoration. Hallelujah. So uh, we are we are going to read, uh, uh, although we are not going to read all those uh, uh, verses, maybe, you know, uh, there are many verses in chapter three. At the same time, we are going to read, uh, I mean, at least one verse uh, from that chapter three of Nehemiah, that is uh, verse four, verse four. And next to them, Merimoth, the son of Arai, son of Hakaz, repaired. And next to them, Meshulam, the son of Barakai, son of Meshzebel, repaired. And next to them was Zadok, the son of Bana, repaired. Yes. Okay. So you can, you can notice a particular word which is used three times in that particular verse itself. Can you say what is that? In verse four, there is a there is a particular term. There is a particular word which is used three times. Can anyone say? Next to him. No. Is it repaired? Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. It's repair or made repairs. Repair or made repairs. Okay. So you know the the word repair. So you can see that word in uh, maybe three times in that uh, verse number four. Okay, the word repair is used 35 times in this chapter. 35 times in this chapter, repair, which means to make strong or to make firm, to make strong or to make firm. I mean, so instead of uh, repair, we can uh, also use the word maintenance or renovation or alteration, which one is I mean, uh, accurate for that, you know, uh, you can use a maintenance or renovation or alteration, whatever it may be, uh, that all uh, words are speaking about the repairing of something, repairing of something. So here, Nehemiah was not interested in a quick... Yeah, uh, you all can uh, uh, mute yourself now because I'm speaking, so, okay. So Nehemiah was not interested in a quick fix. Nehemiah was not interested in a quick fix or he never thought about simply finishing the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem, but he completed the work in a proper way and with a proper purpose and planning. He completed everything. That means rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. He, he completed that with a proper purpose and proper planning. Hallelujah. It is quite natural in these days, especially in India, uh, the workers or the, or the uh, contractors of some of the buildings and the bridges, you know, uh, when, they, when, they are try, when they are doing that, uh, the work of the building, uh, they try to complete the work some, somehow. I mean, they are just, I mean, completing that somehow. And uh, they have a target. Uh, I mean, they have a uh, target also that, uh, like, within within three months or six months, you have to finish the project. I mean, so uh, in fact, it is true that they could finish it in uh, three months or six months within the within the limited days. But the matter is, they are not concerned about the quality or the strength of that building. I mean, somehow they do the white, what, what is that you can call whitewashing or painting. And when, when you look from outside, uh, you, will, you will say, oh, uh, what, a, what a beautiful building it is. And uh, we used to appreciate the workers or the contractors also. I mean, but think about how much strong is that building? How much strong is that building? Even uh, Bible clearly uh, uh, says in uh, Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 10 to 12, Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 10 to 12. Uh, yeah, can you read uh, uh, that verse, Elsa? Precisely because they, they have misled my people, saying, Peace when there is no peace. And because when the people build a wall, these prophets smear, smear it with whitewash. Say to those who smear it with whitewash that it shall fall. There shall be a, del a deluge of rain, and you, O great hailstones, will fall and the stormy wind break out. And when, the wall, and when the wall falls, will it not be said to you, where is the coating which you have smeared it? I mean, what is that? I mean, it says that a whitewashed wall that would 
would uh, uh, soon crumble. That means, you know, I've, I've read it in, uh, in, in Malayalam also that verse. Samadhan mila diri ke samadhan bandu paranya, awar na jenate cadi ciri kyo kondom. Ada cuburum pandal awar kumayam posh kala indo tu kondom. Adarn do biarum bandam kumayam poshin do mero dani paraya. Enda perumad choriyum, yan aliparam poriyeccha kodunga cadi pikum. Cubur biarni diri kono, ninggal poshya kumayam, evda poyan na ninggal orda paraya gay leyo. That means you know when a building is just whitewashed without doing the the work properly that there is, there is a, there's a chance that that building i mean could be uh, in in danger and it may fall down okay so that's the reason that it says that you know our building must be i mean strong and when when hamaya was doing something or when nahamaya was i mean uh, rebuilding the uh, wall of jerusalem he was doing that i mean work in a in a proper way with a planning and he was doing everything i mean uh, according to the according to the word of god so let us think about you know sometimes our personal life and uh, uh, family life also is like this i mean we think i am okay Everything is well with me, and even people looking from outside. I mean, may, may, they may say that okay, oh that brother mm, or that sister is a very good person, or he is a he is a spiritual person. I mean, or she is a spiritual person. I mean, in Malayalam we can say arkumuru doshon chayata or vikti arna avrudu sadharna namula parayaronda. Hallelujah. But we only know, I mean, who we are inside. We are inside. Sometimes, you know, we are always. I mean, uh, we are also. I mean, just like uh, uh, the whitewashed buildings, whitewashed buildings. But the word of God says that we must build our Christian life as a building which is built as a strong and healthy and proper building. Hallelujah. This is what we have to think about. I mean, even today also. You know, when we are just, I mean, uh, making our our Christian life, or when we are, I mean, uh, building our Christian life, it should be according to the Word of God. Because, I mean, when when we are doing that, I mean, we have to, I mean, build our Christian life, which is built as a strong. It must be strong. Our Christian life must be strong, and it must be healthy, and it must be proper building. I mean, we must know the importance of repairing. Our personal Christian life and repairing our family life and repairing the fallen and weak areas of our church. This is very important. Hallelujah. So when we are studying about the the rest, no restoration without renovation, no restoration without renovation, or no restoration without repairing, we have to understand what is the importance of the repairing of our personal Christian life. Many times we are not thinking about our personal Christian life. Many times we are not thinking about our our family life. I mean, the area which is repaired or the area which needs I mean more repairing. I mean, we should know. I mean, what is the I mean importance of the repairing of personal life and the family life, and also repairing the fallen and the big areas of our church. Hallelujah! In order to build the body of Christ. In order to build the body of Christ, each believer must put their maximum effort. I mean, we are the we are the members of the body of Christ. We have to put our maximum effort to build the body of Christ. Hallelujah! Each one of us has a responsibility in repairing the weak areas of our church. Do you think that each one of us has a responsibility in repairing the weak areas of the church or the body of Christ? I mean, that's the reason we are trying to delegate the responsibilities and ministries uh, to every member of our church. I mean, you know, me uh, uh, as a pastor and also the elders together, I mean, are trying to include every person, get involved in one or other responsibility. That's the part of the delegation. You know, we are giving or we are dividing the, I mean, uh, the programs and we are dividing the the ministries into different people. Because that is called a delegation. That's what we read in Bible also. Even in when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, he was doing the same thing that he was giving the responsibility to the I mean different different people. Hallelujah! That's the reason that we are also doing that in our church also. I mean, all of you know, I believe that all of us are getting chances to do something in the church. To do something in the church. It may not be a great thing or big thing, but we are doing our part. Hallelujah! You know, someone uh, could pray, someone could read Bible, someone could sing songs, 
and someone could i mean lead the worship someone uh, could preach the word of god someone could exhort the people and someone could uh, uh, do do the psalms reading or exhortation i mean you know some are involved in sunday school and some in, in the youth ministry in that way we are trying to encourage others and trying to repair the broken areas of a body of christ hallelujah so this is the reason that we are i mean doing in this way that let the people also be involved in different different parts of the ministry and different different parts of the i mean i mean uh, i mean uh, uh, what is that uh, programs because they have the talent hallelujah so that is what ex- exactly we read in chapter uh, nehemiah chapter 3 also that nehemiah appointed people to repair different sections and areas of the broken wall i mean nehemiah was a great man he was a wonderful leader i mean he was doing something that he was appointing some of the people in different 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 places i mean and in different sections and areas of the broken wall the the wall was broken but he was appointing somebody there were many talented people among them there were many talented people among them and in the book of nehemiah we read nehemiah made 12 gates so gates for the wall of jerusalem and he appointed them in different areas to do the repairing work and also to protect that area i mean this, this is what uh, very interesting to understand that nehemiah was i mean arranging somebody or preparing some people in different places especially he was uh, making a uh, toll i mean uh, gates for the uh, wall of jerusalem so he was preparing those people there and keeping them there and they were supposed to rebuild or they were supposed to repair that area and they were uh, the other people were supposed to i mean protect that area in the i mean they, the, those who were standing i mean uh, uh, near the uh, uh, toll gates i mean so we have to understand because he has the know he he was knowing that i mean that they they were many there were many talented people among them there were many talented people among them hallelujah you know different group of people did their parts in rebuilding the ruined walls of jerusalem i mean the wall of jerusalem was destroyed the wall of jerusalem was broken i mean it was destroyed but nehemiah was th- thinking that i mean this different group of people will do their part in rebuilding the ruined wall of jerusalem or destroyed wall of jerusalem okay so we understand from uh, from nehemiah chapter 3 verses 1 8 and 14 you know three three verses we understand uh, something i mean those who are the people uh, though uh, they were i mean working uh, or rebuilding or repairing the wall of jerusalem we will read that those verses nehemiah chapter 3 verses 1 8 and 14 yeah then elisha the high priest arose up rose up with his brothers and priests and they built the sheep gate they consecrated it and set its doors they they they, they consecrated it as far as the tower of of the hundred as far as the tower of hanal next to them uziel the son of Har- hariah goldsmiths repaired next to him hanaiah one of the perfumers repaired and they restored Jerus- jerusalem as far as the bro- as as far as the broad wall Malajah the son of Rahab ruler of the district of Beth Hakaram repaired the dung gate he rebuilt it and set its doors its bolts and its bars okay i don't know how many of you listen to that uh, uh, that verse carefully this verse is carefully you know there are there, there are different groups of people those who are working or repairing the the wall of jerusalem okay so there were high priest and there were levites and there were priest i mean they did their repairing work and also there were i mean what is that god smiths and perfume makers god smiths and perfume perfume makers did their job i mean there were rulers of the district there were rulers of the district they also were doing the repairing work that means from these verses we understand you know every person has a talent and every person has something to do for the for the rebuilding of the wall of jerusalem and they were i mean standing there and they were doing their full effort to make that possible hallelujah so this is what we understand from our church also we have to do something for the for the glory of god for the name of the lord in the coming days hallelujah so let us take our part let us take our share and we have something to do i mean each person has a talent each person has a ministry and you are supposed to do that 
for the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know, again, everything is fine, but there is, a, there is an interesting thing written in chapter 3, verse 5. Okay, they were doing, everyone was doing their work, but at the same time, there is an interesting thing to, to read. That is uh, chapter 3, verse 5. Yeah, Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 5. And next to them, the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles would not stoop to serve their Lord. <laughs> what is that? The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. Amen. So this is very interesting to know that one thing, one negative thing is written there. You know, the Bible is always speaking about the positive things, but at the same time, Bible also is speaking about the negative things of the people. You know, there is a group of people but not willing to work. That's what we read in chapter 3, verse 5. There was a group of people, they were not willing to work. All are engaged in doing some work, repairing some areas. But at the same time, there was a group refusing to do that. They never mind it. They never mind it. They thought, after all, that is the duty of the leaders. I mean, even in our churches also today, the same thing is happening. Some people don't care about anything what happens in the church. You know, some people, they don't care about what happens in our church. They think, or, or there is, they, they think like, uh, I mean, uh, there, there is a pastor, or there are elders, and there are deacons, eh? and there are responsible uh, persons, and that is their duty, let them, let them do that. This is what they think. You know, some people, okay, there are, there's a pastor, there, there are some elders, or there are some uh, deacons to do that, or that is their responsibility, we don't want to do that. But let me tell you, I mean, one thing, you may not, you may not have a position in the church, Okay, that's very clear. You may not have a position in the church, amen. Or, uh, but still, you have a talent or a ministry or a work to do for the uplifting of the body of Christ. I don't know how many of you are thinking about that portion. You know, the people are looking for a position. Okay, if I'm getting that position, I will do that. No, no, no. It's not that like that in the Bible. It is not written. Hallelujah. Even if you don't have a position, even if you don't, uh, if you are not appointed for a position in a, in a particular place, I mean, understand, realize what is your ministry. Understand, realize what is your talent. I mean, still you have a talent, you have a ministry, or you have a work to do for the uplifting of the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, hallelujah. You may not be, I mean, you may not be a president, or you may not be a secretary, or you may not be a treasurer, or elder, or deacon, but if you have a heart of prayer, if you have a heart of prayer, amen, do that and be faithful in that area. If you have a heart of sharing the gospel with other people, do that and be fruitful and faithful in that area. Hallelujah. You know, you, 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 you have to understand one thing, your picture or your video uh, may not be in the YouTube or in the Facebook, or in the website of the church. I mean, no worries. Heavenly Father knows what you do. Heavenly Father knows what you do. Moreover, we are supposed to do everything for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I mean, we are supposed to do everything for the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when, when we do something, just think about the intention behind it. I mean, when we do something, just think I mean, about what is the intention behind it. it, is, is, it is it for the glory of God or is it for the publicity of ourselves? I mean, we have to say that. We have to think about, is it for your glory or is it for the publicity or is it for the glory of God? Hallelujah. You know, uh, personally, uh, I don't like to uh, put my messages and videos in social medias. And usually I hate the popularity and publicity, no? But we are uploading our videos uh, in website uh, only because some of our brothers said that uh, if outsiders are watching uh, those sermons and if they are blessed, then uh, we will keep doing that, okay? That's the reason that we are uploading uh, the, the messages and the Bible studies and everything in the website or Facebook or uh, YouTube, 
eh? if then uh, I'm okay with that because uh, otherwise, you know, uh, I, I don't like uh, that personally. Uh, of course, I understand it's a blessing for uh, many people. Even I got some text messages and emails also uh, from uh, some uh, outsiders saying that uh, the Bible, uh, the, the Bible study and also the sermons, uh, uh, which is uploaded in the YouTube and uh, in the website, it's a, it's a blessing for them and uh, they do watch, I mean, regularly, okay? So that's the reason that uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Otherwise, uh, personally, I don't like it, okay? Okay. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, let everything that we do bring glory unto the Lord. Let everything bring glory unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't do anything for our own fame or for our own publicity. There is no use at all. Hallelujah. Whatever we do, let that be for the glory of God. It is not for our fame. It is not for our publicity. It is not for our, I mean, popularity. Hallelujah. That's what, uh, I mean, Paul is writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. This is very, I mean, very important verse. I mean, we are going to read that verse now. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. When then is Apollos, what is Paul, servants to whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each? I planted Apollos water, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters any, is anything, but only God who gives the growth. What is that? What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task, I planted the seed. Paul said, I planted the seed. Okay. Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. Hallelujah. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters are anything but only God who makes things grow. Hallelujah. We are nothing, even though we are doing something for the uplifting of the body of Christ. I mean, even though we are doing something for the ministry of the Lord, we are nothing. Hallelujah. We, we are just doing the, I mean, sowing, or we are just doing watering, or we are just doing something for the, I mean, expansion of the kingdom of God. But, I mean, God is in control and God should get the glory, all glory, uh, honor unto the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we read here. We are doing everything for the glory of God. We are doing everything for the glory of God. Hallelujah. So let us, let us, I mean, um, work hard to repair or innovate or do the maintenance of the weak areas of our church. Hallelujah. And let us repair the weak areas of our Christian life. Because our spiritual life must be repaired time to time. Our spiritual life must be repaired time to time. And also, let us do the innovation if you feel it is necessary in your family life. Hallelujah. After all, let us do everything for the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, now let us go to our main, uh, main title uh, of today's sermon. Uh, that is uh, Revival Through the Restoration. Revival through the restoration. Hallelujah. And we already read Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 and also Nehemiah chapter 8, I mean, verses 5 and 6. Hallelujah. D listen uh, very carefully. We already read it. I mean, we are going to read it now. Okay. So, uh, there are different areas that uh, uh, the people of Israel were uh, revived, which is mentioned in the book of Ezra uh, and Nehemiah also. You know, there are different areas. The people were revived. So as I'm, I'm preaching this message today, I mean, I, I just pray that let every person of a church be revived. Let us have that revival in us. Let us have that revival in us to do something for the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know, when, when you read uh, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, we understand there are, there are many people, different, different areas. They were, I mean, fruitful for the Lord. I mean, the people of Israel were, I mean, revived, which that is mentioned in that book. I mean, I'm not taking a time to read and explain all those areas where people of Israel were revived, but let me tell you the nutshell of that and we will conclude the message uh, with, a, with a word of prayer. I mean, you know, as we read uh, Ezra chapter 1 verse 1, we already read it, but we will read once again Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. Yeah, Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the, by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in, in, it in writing. 
Okay. What is that? When the people longed for a restoration, first of all, God stirred up, stirred up or revived the spirit of Cyrus, the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. I mean, this verse says, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, by the mouth of Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he sent a proclamation throughout his kingdom. Okay, the Cyrus, the king of Persia, is proclaiming something throughout the kingdom that these people should go back to Jerusalem. These people should go back to Jerusalem. It is written something specifically here. The Lord stirred up or Lord revived the spirit of Cyrus. In some other translation, it is written, Lord moved the heart of Cyrus. Lord moved the heart of Cyrus. Lord inspired the heart of Cyrus. I mean, Lord revived the heart of the King Cyrus of Persia. Hallelujah. Think about, I mean, you know, you know one thing, the King Cyrus was not a, not a Jewish king. We know that. Hmm? The King Cyrus was not a Jewish king. I mean, rather he was a heathen king. He was a heathen king. But it is interesting to read that God revived and inspired the heart of a heathen king to motivate the people of Israel for a restoration and go, to, go back to their own city, Jerusalem. This is very interesting. I mean, even though Cyrus, the king of Persia, was not a Jewish king, he was a heathen king. I mean, but the people of God were very I mean, eager to go, to go back to Jerusalem, the same time, same time, God is, I mean, God is reviving or God is inspiring the heart of a heathen king to motivate the people of God, the people of Israel to, 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 to make a restoration to, the, to go back to their city, Jerusalem. So we read here, the first revival happened in the heart of a heathen king. The first revival happened in the heart of a heathen king. That's the reason he is making a proclamation. You back to your, you go back to Jerusalem, your city, and rebuild the wall or rebuild the temple. So remember one thing: if you and uh, if you, if you are, I mean, uh, longing for a genuine revival. Okay, this is very important. If we are having that longing or if we are having that desire about the genuine revival, our God will prepare somebody for that. I personally believe that. If you have a genuine heart of revival, God will surely prepare somebody for that whom we never expected. I mean, Nehemiah or Esther, they never expect that Cyrus, the, the king of Persia, would do that proclamation. But God is able to do something. God is able to revive and God is able to, I mean, uh, move the heart of a heathen king to, to do a great thing for the people of God. Hallelujah. But we must, must have the desire for a revival and restoration. The time will come. In the right time, God will speak to somebody and God will revive somebody God will do something to somebody and those people will help us and those people will 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 encourage and, and those people will be always I mean helping us in order to rebuild our Christian life and our church life hallelujah so that's what we read here and also as we as we go through the uh, book of Esther and Nehemiah we understand there are different areas that the people of Israel were revived it is there Okay, there are, there are many, many, many areas that we understand the people of Israel also were revived. Okay, it, it, is, it is clearly written there. There was a revival in the matter of unity among the people. There was a revival in the matter of unity among the people of God. Hallelujah. And there was a revival in the matter of reverence for the word of God. In the chapter, we read that. We are not going, going to read all those things. I mean, there, there, was a, there was a revival in the matter of reverence for the word of God. There was a revival in the matter of obedience to the word of God. They were not only reading or they were, they were not only listening the word of God, but they were ready to obey the word of God. Hallelujah. There was a revival in the, mat, revival in the matter of prayer and also mourning over their sin. They started to mourn about their sins and their weakness and their wickedness. 
Hallelujah. This is what we, we hear that, I mean, they had a revival in the matter of prayer and uh, crying in the presence of God about their sins. Hallelujah. There was a revival in the matter of worship. There was a revival in the matter of worship because when they were in captivity, they were not thinking about it. They were not, I mean, having any idea about how to worship God because they were not able to worship the, the true God. They were not able to worship the Jehovah God there in the captivity. But now they, they are revived and they are in the need of worship. Hallelujah. And they have a passion to worship God. So that, uh, I mean, that is the reason that these people are trying to go back to Jerusalem and they are, I mean, rebuilding the altar. They are rebuilding the I mean, uh, temple and they are rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one thing that if you have a longing, if you have a desire to worship God in truth and spirit, I mean, God will open the way for you. God will open the way for you. Hallelujah. I mean, sometimes I mean, we are not able to worship the Lord in a, in, a, in a proper way. Hallelujah. But God says this morning that if you have a desire to do that, hallelujah. If you have a longing to, I mean, if you long to do that, I mean, worship God in the spirit and the truth. I mean, God will open with a way for you. Hallelujah. There was a revival in the matter of spiritual and moral limbs also about the people of Israel. We read there. There was a revival in the matter of spiritual and moral realms of the people. Hallelujah. So let us also pray for a revival in all these areas of our Christian life. We have to pray in the presence of God. Oh Lord, I need a revival in all these areas of my Christian life. Hallelujah. And also, one more thing is important there. Let us have the, have the persistence in revival. Let us have the persistence in revival. You know, there are many, many, many believers, you know, uh, all of a sudden, when they listen a revival sermon, uh, they would say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And they, may, they are jumping and dancing, clapping their hands and making an outward expression. That's fine to do that. That's fine to do that. You know, sometimes when we listen to the sermon, you know, if it, is a, if it is a revival sermon, then we will be, I mean, automatically we will, I mean, say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And we will sometimes jump and dance and clapping hands and making some expression. And that is, that is always good to do that. Do that, no problem, continually do that, regularly do that. But my question is, are we able to continue the same spirit of revival in our life? This is my question. Are we able to continue the same spirit of revival? It is true that we got a revival, but at the same time, are we able to, I mean, I mean continue that constantly? Or are we able to, I mean, continue that same spirit of revival in the upcoming days? Or do we have that persistence in revival? Do we have the persistence in revival? I mean, which cannot be stopped, which cannot be stopped by any powers of this world. I mean, or, or which cannot be stopped with any, any problems of this world. Hallelujah. I know that we have many problems in our life. But I mean, I mean, nothing can stop. I mean, from our worship, nothing can stop from our worship. Hallelujah! We may have many reasons to say that why we are not able to continue the same frequency of our revival, right? We have many questions and we have many reasons to say oh, why. Okay, this is the reason that I am not not able to continue the same frequency of my revival. I mean, you know, there, there, is a, there, is a, there is a verse which is written in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter, chapter 7, verse 14. You will read that verse, uh, which, is very, uh, uh, which is very supporting to this point. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Yeah. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from the heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Hallelujah. This is a this is a familiar verse for every one of us. I know that because I preach this verse. Uh, uh, I think uh, when we started our zooming, zoom meeting, zoom Sunday services. Okay, that was the. I think uh, I I used it. I heard this verse. Okay. Anyway, uh, this verse is which is which is very very closely connected to the importance of the revival in our Christian life, which says uh, if my if my people who are called by my name. 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is what we read in, in this particular verse. Hallelujah. And you know, I mean, this word uh, was, was spoken to King Solomon at the, direct, uh, at the dedication of the temple. At, during the time of dedication of the temple, this word was spoken to King Solomon. And we see the word of promise also there that I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hallelujah. Amen. Of course, there is, a, there is a promise of revival here, but surely there are some hindrances of revival mentioned in this particular verse. Amen. God is always promising about the revival. Okay. God is able and God is willing to revive the people. At the same time, we have some hindrances. We have some hindrances, which is mentioned in this particular verse. What is that? You know, the pride is the first one and the prayerlessness is the second one and priorities are the third one and presumptions are the fourth one. There are mainly four hindrances for our revival. Just think about that. I mean, this morning, as we listen to that particular verse, let me tell you one thing. I mean, let us also have that concept and let us, let us come back to the Lord and pray, oh Lord, I mean, sometimes I want it to be revived. Lord, I am longing for a revival, but there are some hindrances in my personal life. And this is the right time that, I mean, I'm ready to take it out. I'm ready to take it out. And if we are ready to take those things from our life, I mean, God is going to bless us. Hallelujah. That's what we read there. I mean, we read there, if my people humble themselves, that means the pride is the hindrance to the revival. When God says to the people of God, if my people are humbling themselves, that means that is the pride. I mean, the people are having the pride. That is the hindrance of the revival. And secondly, it says that if my people pray, if my people pray, that means prayerlessness is the hindrance to the revival. When God says, if my people pray, I will do the miracle. That means they are not praying. That's the reason there is no miracle happening. Amen. So the second hindrance is prayerlessness is the hindrance for the revival. And thirdly, thirdly, it says that priorities. What is that? If my people seek God, uh, seek God's face first. If my people seek God's face first, that means sometimes our priority is the hindrance to the revival. You know, most of the time we are giving priority for other things, the worldly things, the secular things. I mean, we are not giving the priority for God. We are not spending time in the presence of God. We are not ready to, I mean, seek the face of God. Hallelujah. This morning, I mean, with my heart, let me tell you one thing. If you are not giving the priority for God, if you are not giving the priority, I mean, for the, to seek the face of the Lord, hallelujah, it is sure that, I mean, there are some dangerous things which is going to happen, hallelujah. But let me tell you one thing. I mean, if you are doing, if you are giving the priority for the for God, and if you are giving the, the, the priority to seek the face of the Lord, hallelujah, the God will do something in the midst of the people of God, hallelujah. And again, the fourth thing, the fourth thing, it says that if my people turn from their wicked ways, right? If my people turn from their wicked ways, that means our presumptions is most of the time the hindrance of the revival. Hallelujah. You know, we are not ready to turn back, turn from our wicked ways. We are not ready to turn back from our, our what is that, our I mean, a sinful nature. But sometimes, I mean, the, the spirit of the Lord is saying that, okay, if you are ready to, I mean, I mean, turn back. If you are ready to, I mean, turn from their wicked ways, then God will heal you and God will, I mean, bless you and God will do the miracles in your life. Hallelujah. But today, let us, let us ask, to ask, to ask God to revive us. I mean, we have to ask to God, oh Lord, I need a revival. I need a revival. We need a revival in each area of our life. Hallelujah. Let us pray for that and let us desire for that. Hallelujah. I believe God will send a great revival in our church if we genuinely desire for a revival. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the revival, I mean, uh, the, the revival will lead us 
into a joy of restoration. The revival will lead us into a joy of restoration. Hallelujah. We will think about something about that point also, that the revival uh, will lead us into a joy of restoration. Let us read Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is, a, is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. You know, Nehemiah said in uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, it says, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, how many of you believe that there is a joy of restoration in revival? When the people are revived, when a people are renovated, when the people are repaired, then there is a joy of restoration. There is a joy of restoration. Hallelujah. We read that. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. This morning, let us receive that word. I mean, the joy of the Lord is my strength. How many of you can say that? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I think there is a song also in English. I mean, the joy of the Lord is my strength, right? Hallelujah. And we have the joy and we have the celebration. And also in Nehemiah chapter 12, Nehemiah chapter 12, we see that after the dedication, after the dedication of uh, the wall of Jerusalem, Nehemiah brought all the people and they assembled from different places and started to sing and give thanks. And they celebrated the joy of restoration. Hallelujah. They started to sing unto the Lord. They started to I mean, play the I mean, musical instruments and they started to I mean, assemble, assemble together and they started to I mean, give thanks and sing unto the Lord and they started to celebrate the joy of the restoration. Hallelujah. They were so happy to say that oh, we are restored back from to Jerusalem. We were in captivity but now we have a joy and we have a celebration and we have a restoration. That's the reason we are jumping and dancing and singing Singing the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So remember one thing, where there is a revival, there is a restoration. And where there is a restoration, no doubt there will be a great celebration. Praise God. This is the last sentence I, I would like to tell you that where there is a restoration and where there, I mean, the, the, where there is a revival, there is a restoration. Where there is a revival, there is a restoration. And where there is a restoration, there is no doubt at all, there will be a great celebration. Hallelujah. Let us all close our eyes in the presence of God as we are concluding our I mean, topic today. I mean, this message. Hallelujah. And uh, let, us, let, us, let us look unto the Lord in prayer and meditate the word of God and pray. Hallelujah. Let us take a new decision. Hallelujah. Let us take a new decision that, oh Lord, I need to be revived in the presence of God. I need to, I mean, look for the Lord and I, I need to, I mean, seek the face of the Lord and I'm ready to pray and I'm ready to, I mean, sit in the presence of God. I'm ready to give the preference for the, I mean, for the, uh, for seeking the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us all commit also with the mighty hand of God. Let us all close our eyes in the presence of God. As we conclude this topic today, let me remind you all the main titles that I have been preaching for almost two months. Then, what is that? The restoration is the need of Christian church today. The captivity of Israel and the reasons of their captivity. Their return from captivity to Jerusalem. Their return from captivity to Jerusalem. God's provisions to come out of the exile or captivity. And we have been thinking about the areas where the restoration is necessary the restoration of the worship. That means the altar is the place of receiving. The altar is the place of surrender. The altar is the place of giving. And also the restoration or rebuilding of the temple and the restoration or the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. Amen. Let us understand God is faithful in fulfilling his word of promises and blessings. God is faithful in fulfilling his word of promises and blessings. Nehemiah, the cupbearer. Nehemiah, the provision of God. Nehemiah, the man with the heart of inquiry. Nehemiah, the man of compassion and weeping and praying. And we have been thinking about what is the necessary factors of the restoration. But it's the necessary factors of the restoration. No restoration without a renovation. 
No restoration without a renovation. Revival through restoration. The revival leads us to the joy of restoration. The revival leads us to the joy of restoration. Hallelujah. You know, th these are the main titles we discussed in the previous Sundays. Hallelujah. I believe God is going to revive us and restore us. I mean, hallelujah. Let's desire, I mean, for a genuine revival and a, a, a genuine, I mean, restoration. Hallelujah. Now we are going to sing one song, one Malayalam song, Josan, I request Josan to uh, lead that, uh, I mean, song, uh, one song, Malayalam song, he is going to